welcome to a new video lesson in today's lesson i will discuss about the latin influence on english language so let's begin how has latin influenced english language this is the topic today english has been called a germanic language with a romance vocabulary a large number of these borrowings are latinate that is coming directly from latin or indirectly from latin through one of the romance languages that is french italian portuguese catalan occitan or spanish or from some other languages um, such as greeks into latin and then into english okay so the influence of latin on english is not a phenomena of a particular era of a particular character like those of the scandinavian or even french it began it began in prehistoric times while the uh, anglo saxons were still in their continental homes it is um still a continuing process the latin or classical influence is therefore the most important of all the foreign influences that have enriched english milton's teacher alexander gill says that um the classic that classical influences have done the english language more than harm than ever the cruelties of the danes or the devastations of the normans so we will discuss this uh, whether the latin influence was a help or a hindrance in another lesson today we will discuss about the influences and the time periods of the uh, the time periods when this latin influence happened the most okay so um, as alexander gill says that it has brought more cruel, more devastation than the cruelties of danes or the devastation by the normans that has been brought but just person uh, advise not to side completely with alexander gill that is auto yes person okay um uh, as we recognize in latin or classical influence something between help and a hindrance he says that this latin influence on english has been somewhat between help and hindrance we will discuss that in some other video the latin loans not only fill the gaps in the native stock of words by providing synonyms and adjectives but also enriches the international in intelligibility of the english language the latin loans entered english in different phases and uh, we may note uh, the changing relationship between english and the romance along with the change of time as is evident from the linguistic influence um in mainly three, three phases that is the pre the pre christian latin loans of the zero period or the continental borrowings then it is the after the introduction of christianity and lastly during the renaissance okay but it can also be divided into some other parts where number one can be uh, seen as the pre christian latin loans of the zero period or the continental borrowings next is the celtic transmission phase okay where the pre christian latin loans borrowed in england next is the christian phase next is the middle english phase and then comes the renaissance and post renaissance phase okay so mainly it is divided into three phases but here it is uh, divided it can be if you want to it can be divided into 
uh, subdivided into many other phases. Okay. Latin influenced English language at three different phases. It is during these times, during these phases that uh, Latin loan words entered the English language. Firstly, it was before the conversion of the English to Christianity. Then the English had a few uh, Latin Christian words in their vocabulary. Thus they had charge. Which, which was in Old English, it was Cyrie, C-Y-R-I-E. Ultimately from Greek, Kyriokon, K-Y-R-I-O-K-O-N. Okay? Words like angel, um, which in Old English was angel, but with an E, E-N-G-E-L. Okay? Uh, then devil in old english it was diofol d e o f o l next minister in old english uh, it was mayanster m y a n s t e r then bishop in old english it was biscop or episcopus biscop b i s c o p in old english it was biscop or and episcopus e p i s c o p u s and uh, several others okay secondly uh, with the introduction of christianity latin loan words poured in the names of church dignitaries were taken from latin directly into english okay so uh, for example, abbot, A-B-B-O-T, is a Latin language. The Old English language for this was abbot, A-B-B-O-D. Okay, so abbot, A-B-B-O-T, which is used now, is a Latin loan word. Similarly, nun, N-U-N. Its Old English counterpart was N-U-N-N, nun. Similarly, Pope, Latin, in Old English it was Papa, P-A-P-A. -A. Archbishop, which is a, another a Latin word, Archbishop, A-R-C-H-B-I-S-H-O-P. In Old English it was Archbishop, E-R-C-H-B-I-S-C-O-P, Biscop. Okay. Priest was Latin, uh, is a Latin loan word. In Old English, it was pre prios, p r e o s. Others uh, relating to church and Christian religion taken over in this period are altar, a l t a r, Latin altare, a l t a r e, anthem, a n t h e m. In Latin, it was antiphona, a n t i p h o n a. Mass, M A W -S, S. Latin it was Missa, M I S S A. Okay, so without wholly depending on the foreign words, they utilize the resources of their own language. This was done in three ways. Firstly, by forming new words from the foreign loans by means of native affixes, that is, had that is in modern it is hood h o o d uh, like uh, uh, prios had p r e o s t h a d prios had in modern it is called priesthood okay biscop had in modern it is bishop hood secondly by modifying english word like easter E A S T E R, Old English, it was Estron, E A S T R O N, Estron, was the name of the old pagan spring festival called Ostro, A U S T R O, a huh? goddess of spring. Lastly, Latin influence after Renaissance. Greek words during this period came into um, English through Latin and have at um, any rate been Latinized in spelling and endings. Some of the Greek words borrowed in the 16th century are 
alphabet, chorus, dilemma, genius, J E N I U S, circus, exit, etc. Okay, the 17th century gave the 17th century influence gave dogma, hyphen, museum, orchestra, etc. Greek words like bathos, philander, acrobat, agnostic, and Latin words apparatus, bounds, deficit, baculus, ego, opus, referendum, all these entered into the English language. During and after the Renaissance, quite a number uh, of French words were modeled into closer resemblance with the Latin originals. Okay, so uh, for example, perfect, P E R F E C T, and perfect, P A R F E T, perfect. Okay, were the normal English forms for centuries. But um, it was introduced uh, from, but C was introduced in perfect, P A R F E T, introduced from the Latin at first in spelling, only but afterwards in pronunciation it was changed to perfect, P E R F E C T. Okay. Similarly, verdict, V E R D I C T, has given way to verdict v e r d i c t so how it has gone v i r d i c t to v e r d i c t latin ad a d ad has changed the middle english avis a v i s and adventure as advice and adventure okay advice and adventure as advice and adventure Sometimes, imported Latin words did not always conform with the rules of Latin pronunciation or with exact classical meaning. Exo uh, for example, um, enormous, like Latin was enormous, which means irregular. But in today's meaning, enormous does not mean irregular. Okay, similarly climax, uh, in Greek it was climax, K with a K, K-L-I-M-A-X, which meant ladder, but in today's sense, climax does not mean ladder. So, it in case of pronunciations also, the meaning was lost, the meaning was changed. Similarly, Latin hybrids with the endings also got... Um, into place to influence the English words. For example, Asian, A-T-I-O-N. Uh, the ending Asian is found in starvation, ism, I-S-M, in hedonism, eyes, I-Z-E, eyes in woman eyes, London eyes, etc. Um, Latin and Greek prepositions, uh, X, E-X, X. -X is used in ex king ex headmaster similarly anti is used in anti taxation inter in intermingle intermix uh, etc uh, also anti another example is anti chamber okay so pre um, is used in so what we see here is that um, there is the add of the adding of the endings and prefixes and suffixes. Okay, so the pre pre is pre Darwinian or pro pro in pro vice chancellor. Okay, so these words, all these words are formed out of Latin hybrids with the Latin endings or Latin prepositions or uh, prefix uh, prefixes. Okay, many pair of words um, with native nouns and foreign adjectives uh, were also there for mouth oral, eye ocular, mind 
mental birthday natal day eyeball ocular globe all these were introduced similarly synonyms like youthful juvenile weighty ponderous miserable wretched same identical um, knowledge was science um, manslaughter as homicide manly muscular uh, sleeplessness insomnia where where telegraph w i r d okay telegraph father parental mother maternal all this came down from latin words okay uh, similarly classical words in metaphysics and natural sciences were also uh, introduced were included from latin loan words like philology biology anthropology anatomy philosophy um tele in is distance okay um tele is distance which is used in phone is sound or voice graphs is writing all these meanings uh, goes like this telephone telegraph okay i'm understanding so tele means distance phone means sound so distant sound distant um, writing is included as in hybrid words you know hybrids um, hybrid words and is incorporated within the english uh, vocabulary greek scientific words were also included like geology uh, which is earth love like uh, then thermometer stethoscope uh, perambulator classical formation of adjectives were also there like nasal for nose solar for sun lunar um, for moon scholastic for school all these were incorporated through the latin loans okay today i will also discuss about uh, of about the one period that is the first period that is the zero period or the pre christian during which the pre christian latin loans were uh, included in english vocabulary or which can also be called the pagan phase in the continent okay how i, I will discuss here how the uh, pre christian latin loans were borrowed um, in england so the time of uh, roman rule in britain was short and uh, that time the british isles were inhabited by the celts number of latin words came into the celtic tongue in uh, 449 the germanic uh, into the celtic tongue so in or around uh, 449 the germanic forefathers uh, angles saxons and jutes shifted into britain but the latin words transmitted from the celts were very few as latin was not a popular language with celts and also because the relation between the celts and anglo-saxons were not a friendly one the only important latin uh, word which was transmitted uh, through the celts into english was english castra meaning an enclosed area or camp okay so the english version was chester so the english version of castra was chester used in innumerable place like chesterfield manchester dorchester lancaster uh leicester winchester um gloucester and uh, many more i guess uh, some other latin words were port mount and tower okay 
so the barbaric forefathers during their stay in the continent as early as the 4th century um, 4th century ad borrowed certain latin words in course of their contact with the higher roman civilization this continental borrowings occurred uh, in an age which ac bo called zero period among the earliest adaptation from rome uh, were wine from um, latin vinum words connected with uh, the cultivation and drinking wine are cup from latin calicem c a l i c e m which is german which in german um, became kelch k e l c h okay so what we see here is that the same word is changing uh, the word cheap c h e a p comes from latin caufons c a u p o n e s which in old english um, is cheapian c e a p i a n meaning to buy the older meaning was uh, bargain or price another word um, of commercial significance is monger derived from latin mango which means retailer um and interesting coinage of this time is mongang has literally uh, literally meaning monging house to denote a shop okay uh, m o n g u n g hyphen h u s mongang has like the oldest hybrid compound uh modern compounds are war monger fish monger scandal monger or quarrel monger are also formed from latin words uh, latin moneta pondo ansia m o n e t a comma pondo p o n d o comma ansia u n c i a are also taken over as commercial terms um old english from minet meaning coin now mint old english pound p u n d is now pound old english um, yens y n c e is now inch i n c h other latin word connected with commerce and travel are Uh, mile m i l e anchor punt uh, old english was punt from latin ponto p o n t o household words and names of domestic articles are many okay like kettle mortar linen line meaning in line here means rope actually okay so line is not line line means rope um gem uh, cheese paper poppy butter onion plum and pea are some of the few examples uh, which in a, in the domestic sphere which were included into the english the roman contribution to building art is evidenced as such words as chalk copper pitch and tile okay miscellaneous words as charge bishop caesar meaning emperor pipe meaning flute uh, dragon mule saturday and so on um, were also included a great many words related to vessels or re, uh, receptacles of various kinds uh, were adopted the following are still existing okay like cist c i s t which means chest then amber disc d i s c which means dish cital 
is kettle mortar m o r t e r e is now mortar m o r t a s t a r Uh, so these words and uh, such latin loan words as cook from latin cocus c o q u s kitchen from latin coquina c o q u i n a and meal from latin molina m o l i n a which suggests a complete revolution in the art of cooking food names for a great uh, many plants and fruits were adopted from latin and some of them uh, include are included in english vocabulary like pear p e a r from old english curds c i r s that is cherry plum from latin uh, prunus p r u n u s p from latin pisum p i s u m um coal c o l e coal from latin caulis all these pre christian um loan words are short words mostly monosyllabic or disyllabic and thus easily got accommodated in the english vocabulary of the germanic forefathers we will discuss about the next um phases next phases of loan words um in next classes okay see you thank you